In section 8.1, we will use confidence intervals to estimate a population mean. Let's talk about the central limit theorem, which we learned in section 7.1. The distribution of sample means is approximately normal if the following two conditions are met. The population distribution is normal or the sample size n is large enough greater than 30. The mean of the sample means is the population mean. In other words, the mean of all sample means x bar is equal to the population mean. The standard deviation of all sample means, sigma x bar, is equal to sigma, which is a population standard deviation, divided by the square root of n, where n is a sample size. This is assuming we know what the population standard deviation is. How is statistics used? It is often impossible to calculate the parameter, such as the mean of a population. Therefore, we take a statistic, such as a sample mean, and use it to estimate the parameter. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's say that uh, we want to we want to find uh, the mean height of all adult women in California. If we did not use a sample, then we would have to approach every adult woman in California, measure her height, and then take the mean of all those heights. This is impractical, very time consuming, very expensive, and you would use a lot of resources. Instead, one, one method we could use is we could, we could design a study that'll gather a random sample of 1,000 women. And we can calculate the mean x bar of this sample. We can calculate the mean height of just this sample. Now, this mean height of these 1,000 women, it's not going to be exactly the mean height of all adult women in California, because this only represents the mean height of these 1,000 women. But it will be a good estimator of the parameter. Remember, a parameter is a measurable characteristic of a population, whereas x bar is a statistic, which is a measurable characteristic of a sample. So x bar represents the mean height of a sa the sample of 1,000 women. We could use this to uh, estimate the parameter, which is a mean height of the entire population of an adult woman in California. Point estimate. This is a single value estimate for a parameter. In other words, the best estimate for a parameter. X bar or the mean of all sample means as a best point estimate for mu, which is the population mean. Confidence intervals are interval estimates in other words, a range of values that may contain the true parameter. In other words, we can say with certain confidence that the confidence interval contains the parameter. Let's use our, uh, our study um, from the first uh, first example here. Let's say we found that x bar, which is a sample of this, these 1,000 women, is equal to 63 inches. Now, this won't be the exact height of all adult women in California. However, we can say that this sample is a good estimate for the parameter. So the mean height of all adult women in California may not be exactly 63 inches, but maybe it's between 60 and 66. So give or take three inches each way um, to account for some error. This is called an interval estimate, which is a range of values that may contain the true parameter. And a confidence level is how often the procedure will produce an interval estimate that actually contains the true parameter when repeated a large number of times. So let's say the confidence level was 90%. Then 90% of the time we took a sample of 1,000 women, it will contain whatever the true parameter, in other words, the true mean height of all adult women in California is. And we'll talk much more about this in class. The confidence level gives us the success rate of the procedure used to construct the interval. For example, if we use a 90% or 0.90 confidence level, then 90% of the time, all possible samples of size n 
would produce an interval that contains a true parameter. So if we took a sample of 1,000 women, then the 90% of confidence interval will produce uh, intervals that contain the true true parameter 90% of the time. Here's a general form of a confidence level, of, of confidence interval, sorry. The confidence interval is x bar, which is where x bar is a sample mean, plus or minus the margin of error. So margin of error, if our sample mean is 63, in this case, the margin of error is three inches. So the, the true parameter could be three inches either way of 63 inches. Here's how we calculate margin of error. It's given by z star times the population standard deviation over the square root of n. Z star is called the critical value for a given confidence level. Margin of error is the critical value, which is z star, times the standard deviation, which is given by sigma over the square root of n. Here's a summary. Our point estimate for, uh, so the best estimate for the population mean is x bar. The margin of error is z star, which we will learn how to calculate, times uh, sigma over square root of n. The confidence interval is x bar plus or minus the margin of error, which is z star times sigma over square root of n. Now we can use technology to find z star. In your calculator page, go to normal distribution, find percentile, two-tailed, and confidence level. And that'll give us the confidence level. Okay, um, so find the critical value for a 90% confidence interval. So here's what that means. If we're looking for a 90% confidence interval, that means this middle area is 90%. So what's left over? Well, the whole, the area under the entire curve is 100%. So if the middle area represents 90%, then that will give you 10%. That'll leave us with 10%. But that 10%, it's split up into the left tail and the right tail. So if we take the 10% divided by 2, this leaves us with 5% in each tail. So we got 5% here, and we got 5% here. So we will use uh, our normal distribution calculator, go to find percentile, go to two tail, and we will put that the left tail is 5%. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Okay, let's go to our normal distribution. Go to find percentile, because we have the percentile and now we want to find the z-score for that particular percentile. And the probability in the lower tail, we said was 5%. So choose 5%. If you notice, the z-score given is negative 1.645. So the, the critical value for a 90% confidence interval, which leaves 5% on each of the tails, is 1.645. We always take the positive value of this. Okay, so let's go back to our PowerPoint. So this is negative 1.645. It's the same on the other side, except the z-score will be positive. So the critical value for 90% confidence interval is 1.645 or 1.65. Let's look at the 95% confidence interval. For 95% confidence interval, the area in the middle is 95%. So if we take 100 minus 95, this will leave us with 5%, but that 5% is split up in two tails. If you divide this by 2, we will get 2.5. That's 2.5%. So we can go back to uh, our normal, normal distribution calculator, and instead of 5%, we can enter 2.5%, which I won't show you guys since you guys can do that on your own. And this will give us negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. Remember, we always take the positive val uh, value. so 
the critical value for 95% confidence interval is 1.96. Same thing for 99% confidence interval. That means the area in the middle is 99%. How much does that leave? That leaves 1%, but that 1% is split between two tails. So one half is 0.5. So in the left tail, we will have 0.5%. If you uh, enter this information in your normal distribution calculator, then we will get this is negative 2.575, and this is positive 2.575. In other words, the z-score for a 99% confidence interval it will be 2.575. Or 2.58. So here are the three most commonly used uh, confidence levels. For 90%, the critical value is 1.645. 95% is 1.96. 99% is 2.575. Let's find the critical value for 98% confidence interval. So I will start, have you guys start this, and then we'll finish this in class. So the area in the middle is 98%. This leaves 2% and two tails. If you divide that by two, each tail will have 1%. So use a normal cal <coughs> distribution calculator and you find, find out what that is. Same thing for part C. Okay, now let's do an example. Suppose we wish to estimate the average math SAT score for students at a local high school. We randomly sample 40 of the 850 seniors. We can't sample all 850 seniors, so we only sample 40 of them who took the SAT, and we find that the mean score of the sample is 438. So the sample of 40 students has a mean math score of 438. Suppose we also know that the standard deviation of the population is 105. Build and interpret a 95% confidence interval. So what do we need for a confidence interval? We need to know what the sample mean is. We know what the sample mean is, that's 438. We also need to know what is the critical value. Well, the critical value for 95% confidence interval, we found that in the uh, in the previous um, example, which was 1.96. So the confidence, uh, so the critical value for a 95% confidence uh, level is 1.96. Okay, so now let's plug into the formula. Our formula for the confidence interval is x bar plus or minus the critical value times standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So our sample mean is 438 plus or minus z star, which is 1.96. The population standard deviation is 105. Our sample size n is 40. So that'll be divided by the square root of 40. If you put this in a calculator, then we will get 438 plus or minus 32.54. If you multiply this, this will give you 32.54, which is the margin of error. So the sample uh, mean was 438 for this particular sample, but there's some error involved in that when estimating the population, which is going to be 32.54. So if you take 438 plus 32.54, that will give us 470.54. If we take 438 minus 32.54, this will give us 405.46. This is a 95% confidence interval to estimate the math SAT score for the entire senior class. Here's interpretation. We are 95% confident that the interval 405 0.46 to 470.54 contains the true math SAT score for the senior class. So we're 95% confidence that the true mean math SAT score for the senior class is somewhere in this interval. So the, the true parameter, the true uh, the mean of the all the all the seniors at the SAT uh, who took the SAT the math score uh, could be 410, or it could be 420, or it could be 460, but it's going to be somewhere in this interval, and we can see that with 95% confidence. This is kind of a difficult concept, so um, if you're unsure about this, please don't worry. We will go over this more in class.